Hey folks, welcome back. This is Joel, and uh, we will continue with our discussion on SD-WAN. Um, <clears throat> so in this video, we will look into what we call as the VPN segmentation, right? A brand new feature, um, something which you guys would be really interested in, right? So let's go back. Let's go back, and uh, for folks who are basically coming on to this video directly, uh, just to set a context, you know, we have a very simple setup of this sort, right? Um, we have the headquarters you have, which is the site one, and then we have three branch sites, which is 101, 102, and 103. Uh, we have the MPLS uh, transport here. We have the internet transport, and all the transports have been set, and everything is uh, go, all right? Now, <clears throat> um, let's chat about, or let me just brief you on what we are going to do today, right? So. <clears throat> Let me get my pen. All right, so it's basically called as the um, uh, VPN segmentation. All right, so this is the topic which we are going to dive in, right? So um, now, we use a color just to, so this is my headquarters. Right, I have over here, which is my branch one. Um, you know, the VR2 is my branch, uh, I mean, the site. Sorry, this is site 101, 102, and 103. And this is my site one, which is the headquarters. This is what we have. Right, so as of now, in my topology, you would have seen, uh, or in the previous videos, right, we were interested in only one VPN, right, uh, which is the VPN 10. I'm talking about the service side VPN, right. So on the service side, we basically had, let's say, we're going to use this color. We had, uh, you know, only uh, the VPN 10. You had it over here. You had it on all of the edges, right? We had the VPN 10. So if you observe, VPN 10 at the end of the day is nothing but a VRF, right? In your traditional networking, you know, it's basically nothing but a VRF, right? So let me write that down. So what you see here, that's nothing but a VRF, right? On each of these nodes, everywhere over here, over here, you're basically having, you know, VRFs, right? Uh, VPN is basically a terminology terminology used by Viptela just to describe the same functionality as VRF. Now, what is the basic con uh, concept of VRF, right? We know in a VRF, so when you, VRF is a way of kind of taking your router and breaking it to multiple pieces, right? So on a router, say I can create now VRF A, B, C, D, so I can create four different VRFs. So when I do that, you know, the router ends up creating four different routing tables, right? So A will have a routing table, B will have a routing table, C and D, all of these guys will have its own routing tables, right? And at the same time, the router will have another global routing table as well, right? And the global routing table will not have any of the routes of, you know, individual VRFs, right? That's, that's the basic fundamental about VRF which you, you need to know. Now, that's the same concept applies here as well. Right, so we have VRFs, which means, you know, say I have a, um, uh, I'm, ju I'm just gonna use the word VRF or VPN, you know, interchangeably, but um, hope you guys uh, remember, both are the same, right? In fact, I'm gonna start using the word VPN because in the pillar we are using VPN, right? So what I mean by this is, so if you have a VPN, say 10 over here, right? So this VPN 10 will be able to talk to only VPN 10, right? So we'll be able to talk to all the blue guys which are here, right, on all the sites. Right, but now imagine I create a new VPN on each of the sites. I go and create probably uh, maybe another VPN over here, which is uh, probably say 11, VPN 11, right? On all the edges, I'm gonna go and create a new VPN. Now this particular VPN is gonna be a VPN 11, right? So 10, the VPN 10 will not be able to talk to VPN 11, right? On any of the sites, right? Between any of the sites, they will not be able to talk to, why? Because the VPN 10, which is over here, will have the routes only for all the other VPN 10s, right? Behind every edge. But it's not going to have the routes for the VPN 11, right? That's that's the, um, uh, you know, default behavior of SD-WAN, right? Nothing, again, nothing very strange here. This is the same behavior even in my traditional networking as well. Right. Remember, if you if you uh, go back and if you check something like uh, MPBGP and MPLS L3 VPN, right? We did something very similar. Right. We created VRFs on my provider edges, and we made sure you know the 
um, uh, we made sure only the routes of a particular VRF are exchanged between each other, and you know there is there is uh, uh, no uh, routes which are basically exchanged between VR different between two different VRFs, right? So that's that's still uh, that concept still holds good, even though you talk about traditional networking or HD WAN, that still that concept still holds good, right? So here also we have the same thing. So irrespective of how many number of VPNs you create, say let's say I go and create, I'm, I'm just feeling lucky today, and let me go and create one more, right? So now I have three, uh, you know, VPNs or VRFs behind each of the edges, right? Say 10, 11, and the third one is basically the 12, right? The whole idea here is that 10, the VPN 10 behind VR1-1 will be able to talk to say uh, VPN 10 of R1, but at the same time, it will not be able to talk to the VPN uh, 11, which is behind R1, right? And we will obviously test it, this, test uh, this one as well, right? Now uh, that is how the uh, so how this actually works in the control plane, right? So whatever I told you just now is the functionality, but how it works is obviously pretty simple. You have the vSmart over here, remember? Uh, vSmart sits here. So during that OMP sessions, right? Uh, the OMP sessions which are established when the edges come up. So the edges send all the routes, you know, to the um, up to the vSmart, right? We have discussed this before, and the vSmart what it does is. For example, it will take the routes from R1, R1's VPN 10, right? Let's say it has got a certain set of routes. So it will take these routes and it will, you know, advertise it or it will send it down or reflect it to all the other edges, right? But for the specific uh, VPN, right? So it will take these routes and send it down to probably R2's, you know, VPN 10, uh, VR1-1 VPN 10, right? Uh, and all the other edges. So it makes sure that you know the routes which it is learning for a particular VPN are actually sent, you know, for that specific VPN on the outer edges as well, right? So the vSmart will never take the uh, routes from say VPN 10 and send it to some other VPN, which is VPN 11 or 12, right? Uh, so th that's where that's the whole concept of segmentation here, right? So you're getting the whole segmentation. Now you can now you are free to go and create any number of networks behind your edges, right? And uh, the segmentation is maintained throughout your SD WAN fabric, right? So that's your your control plane. On the data plane, it's again pretty simple. You you know, in the data plane, you just have your IPsec tunnels, right? You have this uh, is a different color, right? So you have your IPsec tunnels, right, across the transports. And what happens is when a packet, say from VPN 10, is going through this tunnel, the packet is tagged, obviously, with the let's say the identifier 10. And when it reaches the other edge, right, it is going to decapsulate and it's going to understand that, okay, this packet has to be destined to the VPN 10 because it has the identifier 10, right? So that's on the data plane. So that's your control plane and data plane of how the whole VPN concept works out, right? VPN, VRF, both are same. So now that brings us to uh, the whole uh, agenda of this uh, session where if this is the default behavior, right? Just now, whatever I explained to you is the default behavior, right? If that is the default behavior, how do you tweak the default behavior, right? How do you tweak? One example I'm going to give you is, say, for example, uh, uh, you have VPN 12, right? You have uh, I've defined three VPNs here. Say I have a VPN, you know, 12 over here, right? So I have this VPN 12, but at the same time, <clears throat> Let's say I don't want this VPN 12 to probably talk to the VPN 12 on the other side, right? Just remember the default behavior is that, you know, the VPN 12 over here will be able to talk to all the other VPN 12s on all the other edges. That's the default behavior. But say I don't want that to happen, right? That's where, you know, our session basically starts, right? So we, we want to define those kind of policies to kind of tweak our default behavior of VPNs in. Uh, SD WAN, right? So that's where this uh, whole uh, VPN segmentation or VPN membership kind of policies uh, kick in, right? It's uh, so these are again not some new kind of policies. It's again uh, centralized uh, policies. Uh, you will get to know if it's a data policy or control policy, you know, uh, once we start uh, playing around with it. But that's exactly what we want to do. We want to tweak the default behavior and make sure that you know we can define policies so that we can dictate, you know, uh, if a VPN um, you know, should really talk to um, the VPN on the other side, right? 
So that's just one use case, but probably we'll see some other use cases as well. But hope the context is you know kind of set now. Okay, so that being said, let me just clear the screen. Looks really uh, okay. So let's get the image again. Right, so to start with, uh, remember we don't have this VPN, the new VPNs yet, right? So we just have the VPN 10 in our topology. So now the first task, uh, the mammoth task would be for us to go and create these new VPNs on behind every of the edge, right? So uh, what I mean by that is basically we have to go and create, uh, you know, those three VPNs which I was drawing here. Uh, I believe we have, say, we have VPN 10 already. But we need to go and create, say, VPN 11, and the last one is, uh, say, VPN 12. Right? We need to go and create this behind every single, uh, you know, behind all the one, two, three, four, five, six, behind all the three edges. Right? And that's what we are going to go and do now. Awesome. So we go to the VH, uh, sorry, uh, V manage. First, let's go and create these two VPNs, which is 11 and 12. So for that, we'll go to our uh, obviously all uh, templates. Now, can I reuse some of the templates? Let's check that. Uh, the other thing is always remember because our topology is this way. Uh, whenever it is dual transport, we are gonna use gigabit zero slash two over here. And whenever it is single transport, where it is uh, this one, this one, or this one, this one. So I think we are using gigabit zero slash one over here towards the VPN side. So just remember that because that's something which we are going to use, right? So Coming back here, now let's see if we have, I see one VPN 10 here, so let's check VPN 10. What do we have in VPN 10? Okay, so there are six devices attached. Okay. So now since we have to create a VPN 11, what I can do, I can just do a copy of this template, right? So let's copy this and let's change this to VH VPN 11. There you go. And once it, uh, okay, so let's now open the new one which we just now created, which is VPN 11. So let's go and edit this. Do we have to put in something? Let's check. Right, so we have, uh, it's loading. Let's go top. So what do we do here? The basic configuration, okay, we change the VPN number from 10 to 11. All of this is kind of like a recap. So if you already know how to create VPNs and sub interfaces, right, you can go about uh, to the next stage. So that should be fine. Um, <clears throat> give me a second, right, okay. So let's imagine that probably this VPN is used for say PCI, right? I'm gonna so put in as VPN PCI, right? I'm just uh, defining a particular purpose for that, you know, VPN. Uh, the function you can you can put in anything right doesn't matter um, so let's keep it on and uh, the that looks good do we have to do do we need a static row let's scroll down so we are good with here I, there is nothing in DNS uh, there is nothing over here okay there is a static route okay so but I believe we don't want a static route in case of this right uh, um, we actually don't want, we, we wanted it in VPN 10, but uh, for this guy we don't want, so we can like remove this. With that, I think we are good. The rest of the stuff can remain as is. So we can update this. So there you go, we have created VPN 11. Now it's going to be very easy for us. Just go and replicate that VPN 11 and we basically get our VPN 12, right? So we are doing it step by step. First, we are introducing both the VPN. So let's again do this copy. Let's just change this to 12 and we should be good. Let's, there you go. So let's do VPN 12 and there you go. Let's edit this. Let's see. Now for VPN 12, let's give the functionality as if it is some kind of a Wi-Fi guest network, right? So let's basically give that name. So basically this changes from 11 to 12, and this one changes from VPN PCI to VPN guest, right? Just like uh, creating a separate network for say, 
you Wi-Fi guest user, right? That makes sense. Now let's update this. There you go. We have done with two VPNs, right? Going back our topology or the diagram here. So we have started with our first step where we have created the VPNs. Now, if you look at my topology here, you have, like I was talking about, you have interfaces connecting to the switch. And earlier, what we had done is we had uh, segmented it that way. So we had created VLANs on my switch. So here you can see already the VLAN 10, right? And um, on the from the on the router side, how do you use one particular interface for multiple segments? The simplest way to do it is, is using sub interfaces. So we already have probably the 1.0 uh, 1.10 sub interface, the dot 10 sub interface serving the VLAN 10. But now, since we have two more VLANs, we basically need to go to every single VHS and create the corresponding sub interfaces for the next for the new two VLANs, right? Which will be dot 11 and dot 12, right? So creating sub interfaces would be the next step, right? So um, let me probably put it down here. So it's basically sub interfaces, right? Like this. So this was dot 10, which is already there, but we have to create dot 11 and dot 12. Okay. Now just bear in mind for um, for this one, the gigabit ethernet is zero slash two. Whereas uh, for this one, this one, and uh, these four routers, the gigabit interface will be gigabit zero slash one, right? This, this particular interface. It's just different because you see for all these four routers, you have single transport. So this is gigabit zero slash zero, this is zero slash one. Whereas these two routers, which are here at the bottom, right? They have dual transport, right? So gigabit zero, gigabit zero slash one gets consumed over that. So that's why this interface is gigabit zero slash two. Right, so that's why when we are creating now sub interfaces, we need to be careful. So let's go and find the right, um, you know, so you see here, we have um, the, the right interfaces, I would say. All right, so let's start with uh, probably the, uh, um, the dual transport ones, right, which is gigabit zero slash two. Let's go and do those first. Let's go and see 2.10, right, we should have those. Yeah, here you go two devices attached, which is VR2 and VR3. So we will go and copy this, right? So when I copy this, I will obviously have to, uh, <clears throat> give me a second. Yeah, so I'll have to change this to uh, 2.11, right? Because it is the, um, this is for VPN 11, right? Let's copy that. And let's go to, uh, 2.11. Right, so let's go and try to edit this. Let's see what we have. So I can see 2.11 loading and uh, let's go down. So this is good. Let's change this from 10 to 11. And uh, this one from, you know, gigabit, let's say to 11, right? Basically doing something very, very simple. Uh, do we have to do anything else? There could be some kind of an IPv4 configuration. We should spot that. Okay, here. So we just need to change this device specific to VPN 11. IPv4 configuration, right? So that makes sense. Um, that should be good, right? Is there anything else? Nothing, nothing. So we are good, I believe. So we can go and update this. Let's keep the rest of the stuff, common. right? So now that we have done it for uh, 11, so we can go and replicate it for 12. Let's finish everything on the dual transport or VR2 and VR3, right? So let's copy this. Let's go and create the sub interface for the VPN 12. Copy. So it's going to be 2.12. There you go. Let's edit. So this changes from 11 to 12, and probably the description also changes from 11 to 12. Let's scroll down. Over here, we'll have to put in the IP address for 12, VPN 12. 
and the rest is cool i guess yeah so let's update that now we have done let's just recap what we have done we have done it for these two guys right we have taken care um you know the vlan 11 uh, sorry vpn 11 and vpn 12 and we have also taken care of the sub interfaces associated with these guys for the uh, vr2 and vr3 now we're going to do the same thing for the rest of the four routers right so let's go and do that for this uh, 0 slash 1.10 right so let's go and do that first let's find uh, 1.10 oh there are two of these okay this is going to take some time so anyway so we have 1.10 so this is probably for this is for site 101 so it means the first one is for site 1 so let's do the site 1 first uh, first you copy it change this to 11 right so um yeah or maybe let's make it a little more intuitive so that it's easier for us site one right let's put that here so this is my site one um and let's copy this So it's going to be 1.11. Edit. So this is all right. This changes from 10 to 11. And this also changes from 10 to 11. Right. Uh, that looks good. Okay, that looks good. So we can update this. Oh, okay. I think I forgot to change the IPv for it. Okay, my bad. I have to just edit that again. Let's check the uh, IPv4. This should be an IPv4. Before. Yeah, over here. I forgot to change this from VPN 10 to 11. Right, otherwise we'll be confused later when we put in the IP addresses. Awesome. So that's done. So now that that is done, we can just use that to replicate it for the headquarters. Let's pick the 1.11 and just copy this and do the same thing for 1.12, which is the uh, VPN 12. So if you do this systematically, it's uh, not going to confuse you, but then if you do it uh, in a haphazard way, it's going to obviously confuse you later when you put in the values, right? So let's edit it. Let's go to the VPN 12 on the headquarters side. And I believe I'll have to change this to 11 to 12. Change this one as well to 12. And the IP address, basically we'll have to change the text from say VPN 11 to 12. I think we are good. And the rest is all cool. Let's go and save this. So we have done this. We have taken care of the headquarters. The only guy remaining is my site 101. And I believe we have we have to do that. So for that, so it's going to be again, let's go to 1.10. So you find this. Let's take this. Let's copy this. Let's do this for, um, sorry, this is site 101. It's fine. It's just that I want to change this to 11. This one also, I want to change this to 11. Okay. Copy. And so uh, let's change this to 1.11. And right, so here uh, you will basically find which is the one which I just now created, this one, right? So let's go and uh, edit this. So while I'm on this one, we will go and fix the same thing which we did earlier. So let's change this to 11 and this one to 11. And the IPv4, let's go and change this to 11 too. Okay, 
That makes sense. Update. Again, 15, 11, and we can copy it for the 12. Right? So let's go and copy this or duplicate it. Let's change 11 to 12. And copy 1.12. So here you go. So you have the not site one. You want this one. So let's go and edit this. Hope, hope you're getting what I'm trying to do here, right? Basically creating the VPNs on each of my site by creating obviously the templates because all our devices are in the vManage mode right now. All right, so we have it here 1.12 and the other one is the IP address. Awesome, so I think we are good that we can save this. All right, now that we have created all these feature templates, we have to go and attach this feature template to the device template, right? That's our step. But just one note here, which I want to call out is that, um, if you remember my topology here, I have uh, some kind of a VRRP configuration here, only on site 101, right? So I have the switch to, and I have VRRP configuration between VR1-1 and VR1-2, right? And all of that VRRP configuration is existing currently in uh, VPN uh, 10, right? The existing VPN. So I did not want to, I don't want to kind of uh, touch that and screw it up. So what I'm gonna do is, we are going to go and create this um, um, VPNs um, and the sub interfaces, everything, we're basically gonna go, go and do that on, uh, uh, on, on, on every router except the BR1-2, all right? So except the BR1-2 over here, rest of the, all the routers, right? Or let me show this diagram. So except the BR, one dash to accept this guy, rest everywhere, we are basically going to go and create these three, you know, VPNs, right? That's that's basically our next step. So to do that, let's go, let's go to my, right? So let's go to my vManage and let's go to the device template. Okay, so where do we start with? Let's start with say R1, uh, R1 is over here. Let's go and edit it. So over here, you should uh, find a way. Okay, so let's not change anything over there. Uh, we should have the service side VPN over here. There you go. So we already, we currently have the VPN 10, but we want to add a new VPN, right? So let's go and add service VPN. And here you get the option. So you can select your VPN 11. Right, and here you can then select the VPN interface and then select the corresponding template which you have created for for this particular, you know, um, VPN, right? So that's important. So um, the corresponding sub interface for my R1 is going to be what? So here you need to be careful. Just look here. It, this is where, you know, the naming actually helps a lot. So because we are on site one, you can see I have this one. So this is what I have to select. It's a uh, uh, dot 11 and site one, right? So I've named it very easily, so it's easier now. But not just, uh, you know, VPN 11, I also need to create VPN 12, don't I? So I'll add one more. What is that? Okay, let me just scroll a bit top. Yep, little more top here. There we go, let's add one more. So here you select obviously the VPN 12 and you need to add a VPN interface. And here you go and select site one, but for VPN 12, which is it. So this is, uh, sorry, this one, right? Site one, VPN 12, right? Let's just double confirm if you have added the right stuff. Yes, looks good. So we are good, let's go and update this. Right, so now this will basically go down for my R1 and R2 because there are two devices, right? So if you see here, I'm oh sorry, this is only one device. We have just added for one device, right? So let's go and, um, um, okay, so let's go. Okay, that is required here, sorry. So we need to put in some values here, right? We need to put in the IP addresses, which, uh, which are basically for VPN 11 and VPN 12. So what are those IP addresses? That's important. So the IP addresses are going to be, we'll probably use something like uh, 
let's come here. Let's go to EPN level. So let me actually write in the IP address here so, it's so that it's easier for you guys to build the lab later. So it's going to be something like, um, you know, 172.16.11.2. Slash 29. Right, I'm going to write it only for one node. You can kind of like use the same format for the other one, right? So this would be for VPN 11. For VPN 12, it's going to be 172.16.12.2 slash 29. You know where I'm heading with this, right? So obviously for R2, it is be different, which we will do it as well, right? But hope this is clear. This is how we are, you know, uh, putting in the IP address for my um, VPN 11 and VPN 12. So let's go and do that. Right, so we have 12 here. So for the 12, it's going to be 172.16.12.2 slash 29. And here it's going to be 172.17, sorry, not 17, 16.11.2 uh, slash uh, 29. Right, so there you go. You're going to hit update. Next. So that's going to happen. So we are right now putting in the IP addresses for the sub interfaces. All right, that is done. Um, we will go and quickly do it for R2 as well. Maybe I'll do it for R2 and then pause the video and do it for the rest of them because if I'm showing you two devices, I believe you, you can then probably go and do it for the rest of them, right? So let's go to edit again. The same steps. We have to add uh, two VPNs here. Let's go to service VPN. We already have uh, one VPN, so let's add one more as well right now. So there you go, we have two. So the first one, let's go and add your VPN 11. And uh, we'll have to add a VPN interface. And that interface is going to be your site one where is the site one site one and vpn 11 here All right let's scroll down let's go to vpn 12 and add in vpn interface and select uh, site one but for vpn 12 over here All right let's update this so by doing that we have kind of added the stuff needed for r2 this is on r2 and i'll have to add in some values Right, the IP addresses, right? So maybe let me write that as well. So here, for this guy, use a different color. So again, you have 11 and you have 12, right? For R2, it is going to be 172.16.11.3 slash 29, right? Here it is going to be 172.16.12.3 slash 29. So that's going to be my uh, IP addresses for VPN 11 and 12 on R1 and R2. Let's go back here. So let's scroll down. There we go. So here, 172.16.11. Sorry, this is VPN 12. So it's 12.3 uh, slash 29. And it's almost the same. Let's go and paste it here. So this is going to be 11.3. All right, update. We are good. Hit the next button. Configure devices. All right, now that it is done, let me pause the video for a minute and go and do uh, the same thing on the rest of the devices, which is we have, I believe, uh, four other devices. And I will come back after doing that. All right, so I went and added the VPN 11 and 12. Uh, and the corresponding sub interfaces to all the devices, obviously, except uh, the BR1 2, like I spoke earlier, right? I also put in all the IP addresses for you guys to, if you want to recreate the lab, just if you want me to explain. So, here you can see the ones which are highlighted in blue correspond to VPN 11, right? The blue one here, this one is also the blue, and the blue one over here, right? Uh, so, this is the address scheme which I have used for my VPN 11, and the red ones correspond to VPN 12, right? And the green one is VPN 10, which we already have, which we have done in my previous videos, I've used it, right? So this is the VPN 10, which is already there. I did not configure anything extra. I just put it here, you know, to understand the IP address key, right? 
Now, I, obviously, I have done this same configuration on the rest of the nodes, which is BR2 and BR3. I just did not mention it here, but we have done it over here as well, right? So we have the whole uh, VPN 11 and 12 created throughout the fabric, and we have also created the sub interfaces uh, towards the switches uh, for for segmenting the traffic nicely, right? Now we can go and test this. All right, so to test this, let's probably go down to probably my R1, which is here. Let's check the if the configuration is strong, right? So interface probably tab. There you go. So I can see VPN 11 here and VPN 12, right? The two sub interfaces with the IP addresses shown here, right? This is exactly what I want. Now next, let's look at the routes. Show IP routes. Uh, let's look at the VPN 10 first, which is my, uh, which is the VPN which is already existing before, right? Sorry. So IP route, VPN 10, just put in a tab and it should give you the routes which are in VPN 10. So this is like a VRF, right? This is the routing table of VPN 10 and these are all the routes which are there, right? You can see the 32 the route is inside this, there is a 60 route, there is 99 route, so all of these routes are inside the uh, VPN 10. But now let's go and check what is there inside VPN 11 and 12 which we just now added, right? So if you go and see here, you can see the um, VPN 11, uh, you have the routes coming in from site 101, site 102, and site 103, right? So these are basically the networks from here, right? These networks, right? This IP address is 129, but obviously the network is 128, right? So that's why you see here, uh, the uh, the networks coming in from, so these two are coming in from, you can see here the TDOT IP, 101, site 101, this is coming from 102 and 103, right? So we have the routes, uh, you know, from those VPNs coming into my uh, VPN 11. The other VPN which we added was VPN 12. So let's see if that is there, right? Which is basically from my diagram, the red ones, right? So you should see all the red IPs now. We earlier saw the blue ones, now we should see all the red ones. So the red ones are basically all the 1.192s, right? So this first two are coming from, uh, again, site 101, 102, 103, and obviously this is the local one, right? So which means uh, whatever we did till now is good. The way we created VPNs, the way we created the sub interfaces, all of that worked. And uh, those routes are basically now getting advertised. Uh, you know, the connected routes over here, they are basically getting advertised over OMP, you know, going to the vSmart and from vSmart, coming to the corresponding VPN from the other side, right? That's the point which I was trying to make earlier as well. You won't see, say this 193, right? Or the 192 network or the 193 IP, you won't see it in, you know, the VPN 11, right? So you don't see 193 here. At the same time, you don't see any of these 128 appearing down here, right? So that is mainly what I wanted to say with respect to isolation and VPN segmentation, okay? That being said, next, what do we do next? We can also ping and test, right? To basically double confirm that. So if you go to my topology, I have like a Windows PC here on site 101 and that's actually in VLAN 10. So I can basically show you that. So if I go to something like uh, right here, we have already seen that 172.16.32.1, that network is in VPN 10. And this PC is also in VPN 10. And as a result of that, you'll be able to ping, right? Give it a second. Yeah, see, you, you can see it's pinging. Similarly, if I want to ping, uh, say, site uh, 102's, uh, uh, you know, site 102, which is 172.17, one dot, uh, sorry, I believe it is, keep forgetting the IPs. I think it is two dot, probably two dot one, if I'm not wrong, yeah. So this should also work because, again, this IP also is in your, um, is in my uh, uh, VPN 10, right? Similarly, on the site three, if I change this to three, you'll find the ping working, right? What I wanted to show here is that this PC which is sitting here, will be able to talk to site two, site 102, site 103, or the headquarters, but it will only be able to talk to the VPN 10, right, of those sites. It won't be able to talk to other VPNs, right? And that we can check as well. So uh, say, for example, uh, on my, uh, you know, headquarters, I have an IP, which is uh, uh, 172.16.11.1, right? That's the IP address, if I'm not wrong. Let's check that. I think it's up here somewhere here, yeah? So this is the site 11, right? So if I want to ping this one from the uh, from the PC, this will not work. Right, this will not work because 
this particular PC is in VPN 10, right? But we are trying to talk to someone who is in a different VPN, which is VPN 11, right? So this will not work. Uh, so that is expected. And what, whatever we have done till now is basically the default behavior. We have set up all the VPNs and we have shown how the segmentation works, but this is the default behavior. Now here comes the interesting part. Right, where uh, we want to tweak the default behavior. Right, so that's where the first use case comes into play. So let me just reduce the screen size a bit. So let's just move it up here. Right, so what do we do in our uh, use case one? Right, so let me just uh, put in three, uh, maybe let's put in some buckets, which is, uh, let's see here. This is my site one, uh, this is 101. 102 and 103, these are my sites, right? So what VPNs do I have? Here I have 10, 11, and 12. Here I have 10, 11, and 12. All the places I have the three VPNs right now. And the VPN 10 over here is able to talk to this VPN 10, to this VPN 10, and this VPN 10, right? But obviously there is no uh, connection between the two different VPNs. But now what I wanna do is I want to, do something different where let's say we keep the site one as is right let's not touch this but on the site 101 102 and 103 i don't want my vpn 12 right to talk to each other right i don't want this to happen right the default by default behavior they're going to talk to each other but i don't want that to happen reason is probably something like you know maybe uh, this is some kind of because i've told you vpn 12 is a guest network right and I really don't want the guest network of branch 101 talking to the guest network of 102, right? Doesn't make actually sense, right? So that is why I kind of want to create an isolation and not have these guys talk to each other, right? That's what we are going to achieve now. So that's our, you know, let's say use case number one, right? So before we uh, even configure this, let's probably go down to say BR3 and check this out, right? So if I go to BR3 here, and here if i do something like uh, show omp routes i want to show you like what is the state right now and after doing the configurations you know what is going to be so if i do this i'm not sure if this will work uh, right let's basically do this show omp omp routes and let's uh, probably tap it. Right, so as of now, you see, I'm getting the routes for all the three VPNs, which is VPN 0 for VPN 11, uh, sorry, VPN 10, VPN 11, and VPN 12. Right, you see that? But after putting this policy, we will no longer get this. So that is what we are trying to do. We don't want any kind of communication on the 12th, VPN 12. Right, so that's why we have to somehow get this removed. So that's where our policy comes into play. So what we do is we go down to our policy page as usual. There you go. And on the policy page, let's probably go and uh, click on the list because we'll have to add the VPN numbers. Right, so let's go here. Let's go to the centralized policy. It's a centralized policy. I hope you got the cube. Whatever we are doing, it's centralized policy. Let's click on list. So when we go down to the list, uh, we will have to add a VPN list here. So let's go to the VPN. Let's, we already have just 10, but we are going to add uh, a list which is comprising only of um, 10 and 11, right? Because we don't want 12, right? So we are going to group these two VPNs into one list called as 10 and 11. Right, so let's say 10 11. Let's add this. Right, so we have two VPNs. Uh, we have created a list over there, which is great. Now, let's go back to my centralized policy. Let's add a new policy. Right, um, so we are here. Let's click on next. So, here you see we have already done topology before the hub and um, spoke kind of configurations and all of that. So we are now going to the VPN membership, right? So we go to the VPN membership. 
and uh, here we will go and add a VPN membership policy. Right? Let's call this as I don't know maybe VPN member site. And uh, we have to select the um, site list, which is basically uh, basically the uh, spokes, right? So this one, this list we have already created before, so I'm using it as is. The VPN list, whatever we created just now, which is 10 and 11, right? We selected only spokes because we don't want this policy to go for the headquarters. The headquarters, we have all the three VPNs. Only on the spokes, we want this thing to be, you know, uh, activated, right? So that. Once we are done with that, what do we do next? Um, let's probably do we have to add this? Okay, so this will just add one more. No, we just have one more and we're gonna save this. Okay, so once done with that, let's go to the next. So here you will basically get um, the option. Uh, I mean, this is again. Mainly for the data policies, we are not going to do anything here. Let's go next again. Yeah, so this place, let's go and put in our name, the policy name. Let's basically call this as um, a topology segmentation, right? So it's basically segmenting. So go and put a name. I mean, the name doesn't matter. You can use anything. <clears throat> right, but uh, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, do we have to do anything else? I think that's it. Uh, yeah, so let's probably preview this. There you go. We have, this is the policy which will be pushed down. Let's see where it will be pushed. Will it be pushed to the devices or will it be pushed to the vSmart, right? But uh, this is this is little, we have created two lists over here. And, um, you know, we are basically telling that, you know, um, um, allow communication only between VPN 10 and 11, right? Uh, um, basically allow 10 to talk to 10, 11 to talk to 11, but 12 don't allow it to talk to 12, right? So that's what we are doing. We are saving the policy, right? So once done, we can come here and we can activate it. So there you go. It's getting pushed to vSmart. All right, there you go, it got pushed. Now let's go and quickly check it on my vSmart. So if I do show running config policy, and it should show you the policy, right, which is available here. Now I can go and check on my devices, right? Uh, okay, I think I already checked this, but you can check it here as well. If you do show policy from vSmart, you see, you don't get the policy here. So I would categorize this particular policy as a centralized control policy right so whatever we are doing now vpn segmentation it's a centralized control policy because the policy doesn't get pushed to uh, the the edges right um anyway so uh, now that we have done that now let's go and verify right so we where we were checking we were checking on vr3 you see here this was the output before the policy before the policy we were getting all the routes for um you know uh, uh, the uh, vpn 12 in fact you are getting it from uh, the site one, uh, which is headquarters. This was your site 101. This is site 102. And this was the local, obviously, my local uh, site 103. Now, let me just hit the upward arrow and get the same output again because we have now pushed the policy. You can see the difference. All the three uh, routes uh, the, for the VPN 12 are vanished, right? So you had three separate routes here. So all of these have vanished. Why? Because we have told, uh, you know, the spokes that you guys can't talk to each other uh, on your VPN 12, right? So the VPN 12 routes, which, um, you know, which exist um, on a specific spoke, it is not shared with the VPN 12 on the other side, right? So as a result, you know, um, now I'll not be able to probably ping uh, on this particular VPN uh, for the other spokes, right? So uh, this is what we have achieved. We have prevented the VPN 12 from talking to each other, right? That's that's actually a very interesting use case which we have, you know, achieved just now. 
All right, so we'll do one more use case, right? Uh, to just make sure that we get this concept, right? So second use case, which we are going to do here is inter VPN uh, communication, right? And what I mean by that is, um, what we want to do is that uh, we want to make sure that our VPNs, uh, say 10 and 11, are able to communicate with each other, right? So what I mean is, uh, maybe I'll use the same diagram here. Uh, you see we had the VPN 10s over here, right? These are my VPN 10s and I had my VPN 11 over here, right? <clears throat> but right now, by default, these both are not able to communicate each other, which means when I say default, between these both, right, like this. This communication is restricted between these folks, between between two different VPNs, right? Or more specifically, if I say go down to one of the routers, say, let's use one of the router, maybe let's take a different router. Right, so I go down here, and uh, if I do something like show OMP route, or show, show IP routes, also is fine. And uh, if I say tablet, or can I do it for VRF, I believe? VPN say 10 and then tablet, right? So this is what I mean. So right now you see uh, when I when I see the IP routes for VPN 10, right? I basically see only the routes which are from VPN 10. Right, and this is expected because VPN 10 is only able to talk to other VPN 10. But what if I want the routes for VPN 11, right, also coming in here, right? So that's what we are going to explore now. Okay, so uh, yeah, so by doing this, what we would achieve is that our PC, which is here, which is in VPN 10, will be able to talk to some other device over here, which is in a different VPN, like say VPN 11, right? So we are trying to establish this inter VPN communication which is again, by default, not the um, default behavior. We are using policies and uh, you know, uh, using our configuration to achieve this, okay? That being said, let's go back to vManage. So we have set up our use case or we have explained the use case. I think it's time to go to policies. We, um, just, this is gonna be interesting. So we'll start with um, going and creating probably a topology here. Now under the topology here, let's go and create the hub and spoke mesh. Let's create a custom control. And um, yeah, let's give a name, probably something like, so in a, in a traditional networking, how do you think this would have happened? We would have done it something like using export route target, import route targets, right? That's your traditional networking uh, where you try to communicate between two VRFs by using the route targets. So here also it does something very similar. Uh, but I just wanted to connect you guys to the traditional way of doing it, right? So now let's create an add control policy. Let's click on route. And uh, here we will basically go and add our sequence rules as usual. We'll have to match based on something, right? What will be our match? Here our match would be the VPN list because we want the uh, 10 and 11 to talk to each other, right? So let's go and select there should be a VPN, I believe this one. Yeah, there you go. So we'll go and select the VPN list which we have created. And the action is basically going to be the export, right? Accept this and you should have export to, right? And again, select the same 10 and 11. So we are saying whatever is there in 10 and 11, export it to 10 and 11. Right, make sense? And uh, obviously, uh, yeah, yeah, save this. And remember to go to the default action and not reject everything, probably change it to accept because the rest of the routes also we want, but uh, we don't want to reject it. Right? So that said, save that. Okay, saved. Yep, there you go. Now we can save this policy over here. Let's go back to our uh, centralized policies. Let's go to this, uh, whatever we have created earlier, let's edit it, the topo segment, right? Which we have created the centralized policy, let's edit it. So when you edit it, you basically get this option here. Let's go and uh, we should probably go to topology down here. 
and let's add, uh, import the stuff which we created just now, right? So what did we create? We created a custom one. So let's import that. It's basically VPN export. So we are basically importing that. Topo VPN export, yeah, that one. So let's import it. So once you import it, um, I think that's it here. Probably go to the po policy application. So here you'll have to select, uh, you know, your sites. This is what we had earlier. That's fine. Uh, we are going to keep it. So let's go and add new site list. Will it be inbound or outbound? Let's check. Yeah, inbound. So inbound site list will be, <clears throat> let me think. So there's a policy, policy segmentation. Um, the site list basically is going to be all the sites, right? We basically want this applied to everywhere. So let's select everything. That, that should be fine. So uh, yeah, it's basically inbound. So that should be good. And uh, we are going to apply this inbound. And um, do we have to do anything else? Probably save this. Activate it, right? But uh, while that is getting activated, just to recap, what we did was we are trying to make sure that uh, VPN 10 talks to VPN 11, right? And in a traditional networking, you would do this using your VRF exports route target import route target, right? So the route targets exported from here, we would basically import it in the other VRF, right? That's how we would do it. Now, same thing happens here. Um, and uh, so that's why what we did was we selected, uh, we basically created a topology um, and we explicitly created a topology rule where we said that, you know, um, everything coming from 10 and one should be sent to 10 and one, right? So uh, that was the whole reason we created this policy. And then we also selected where you want to apply this. We applied it on the inbound um, because all the routes are basically learned inbound, right? Um, uh, you can also probably apply it outbound as well. Uh, but you need to be careful and you need to apply it to all the sites which you want. Right now, I want it for all the sites. So that's why I selected all the sites, right? So we have activated it. Let's see if it is done. All right, so this is completed, which means now I should be good to go and check this. Let's go to the same router where we have the output collected from earlier. So this is the one, right? So if I probably go and run the same command, Right, you see the difference? Let's scroll top a bit. So you see now the IP routes, earlier the IP routes, which you were getting, you don't see anything dot 128 over here, right? Why? Because you see from the diagram, the uh, dot 128, 129 is the IP address, but dot 128 is basically the, uh, you know, the, uh, the subnet corresponding to VPN 11, right? And, uh, yeah, so this was this was before. You don't see that. But now you basically see that, right? So you see dot 128 here coming in from the branch three. You see dot 128 coming from branch two. And you will also have uh, 172.16.11 coming in from R1 and R2 over here, right? So which means what is happening is that we have made sure that 10 and 11 are able to talk to each other. So under the tens routing table, we are able to see the routes of 11 as well, right? Which makes me think I should be able to now, see earlier this ping was not working here, but now this ping should work, right? Isn't that amazing? So earlier, you see here, we had it at timed out. It was not working. 172.16.11.2, it was not working because this particular PC is on VPN here. This particular PC, right? Or maybe maybe here, this is a very good example. So here, this particular PC is in VPN 10. Ideally, it is not supposed to talk to the VPN 11 on the headquarters side, right? But because of the policy which we put in just now, it is able to, you know, talk to, um, you know, uh, the uh, VPN, which is that. Yeah, this is basically the VPN 11 on the headquarters side, right? We should also be able to talk to probably 172.17.129, uh, sorry, uh, dot, I believe it is 2.129, right? This is the VPN 11 on the uh, BR2, right? That works. And uh, I should also be able to talk to VPN 11 on BR3, 
there you go so we are able to achieve inter vpn communication just by using one single policy right so that's exactly what we achieved so let's recap uh, i think we have basically touched upon the basic things which we wanted to here uh, what we did was we started with the vpn membership as our topic for today uh, because we we wanted to um, <clears throat> look at uh, you know uh, a way wherein we can I mean, uh, at least at least when we started with we first created all the vpns which we needed on each of the edges right we created the vpns we created the uh, sub interfaces which are needed you know so that it satisfies the topology which we have right because each of the edges are connected to the switch via sub interfaces and you have corresponding vlans for each of the segments right so that's why we created the sub interfaces on all the edges we created all the uh, vpns which is vpn 11 and 12 10 was already existing so once we did the, our homework what we did next was we wanted to um, so the default behavior is that a particular vpn will be able to talk to the same vpn on its counterpart right so green will be able to talk to green on the other edges blue will be able to talk to blue on the other edges and that's the default behavior but we wanted to tweak it so we used the vpn membership uh, kind of a policy to tweak it where we prevented you know the vpn 12 which is on the spokes right we prevented the vpn 12 from talking to another vpn 12 right on the same uh, on a different edge right so we we tweaked the default behavior by using a policy second is we used the topology policy to do something interesting where we kind of uh, established the inter vpn communication by default again that is not possible but we used a policy to establish communication between two different vpns right so hope uh, that was very clear you are free to go and explore uh, you know the rest of the uh, features up there uh, so this was this is basically this was a video on uh, how sd wan you know provides the whole segmentation um, you know in the fabric how uh, how it provides i mean the default behavior is segmentation it provides a very good segmentation where each vpn is not able to talk to other vpns but um, you know you can again go about creating your policies to further you know tweak the default behavior like we have done with the other features of sd wan Thanks for watching guys and have a good day.